Hello everybody, welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin, I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. These few weeks we have been involved in writing a PDF exporter, um, a super wonderful exporter that will enable all sorts of extra features in the PDF specification. Before I go on, I wanted to give my sympathies for the death of the PDF creator, John Warnock. Um, I may not always get on with the way in which the PDF specification is structured, and sometimes I grumble a little bit, but I fully respect the engineering talent that it took in the 1990s uh, to put together a specification that allowed people to print content on many, many different kinds of devices. Okay, so... Before we go on, I want to give a big shout out and a big th thank you to all of my sponsors. Thank you all so much for your help in being able to pay for my time to work on the kinds of things that you want to see in Inkscape. If you can share these videos and basically grow the number of people that are aware of my project here, I think we can make this even more successful. Um, so let's get into the actual work that we managed to do this week. This week is all about text and it comes to you in three parts. The first is fonts. Now, I don't know if you're aware, but like fonts are, um, I would say like needlessly complicated, but I understand exactly where they're coming from. When you see a font name, let's say Times New Roman, that's actually a font family, right? And the family contains lots of styles like bold and italic and small caps and, you know, all sorts of stuff. And each one of those styles can point to a completely separate true type font file. And so what I needed to be able to do is I needed to be able to match the font family name plus the font family styles uh, to an actual file on your disk that then I can feed into the PDF exporter. Um, this is accomplished by converting uh, this SVG style of uh, uh, style sheets called cascading style sheets into a what's known as a, a font config um, lookup um, and then being able to match that to an actual file name that file name can then be read off the disk and then fed into the pdf exporter so that's the first hurdle and i'm pretty sure i've managed to successfully fix that uh, the second part of text is the um positioning. Now this is complicated. Do you remember in the pre previous weeks when I talked about the fact that um, PDF starts at the bottom, uh, the bottom left corner is 0, 0, XY, and SVG starts at the, at the top left uh, as 0, 0. And that means that all of the shapes and things that you build when you're drawing in a PDF have to be flipped around. The problem is, is that text can't be flipped around because if you flip text, it's upside down, right? And part of the reason why this is a problem is because the text is painted from the baseline, i.e. where the text characters will go. And that baseline in a PDF file is nearest to the origin. It's nearest to 0, 0. Where in an SVG file, it's the furthest away from the origin. So you have to basically flip the coordinate system twice in order to get the text basically back into the location that it needs to happen in. And it needs to be compounded with any transformations that have already happened. Imagine if you skewed the text or rotated the text in a group or some other aspect um, as you were build building it. Okay, then that's not even the start of it. Then you have all sorts of properties on text itself, whether it's flowed text or whether it's got word spacing or whether there's special characters um, whether there's ways in which the, the glyphs are paint, painted on top of each other, etc., etc. All of this um, glyph layout work is very, very complicated, and Inkscape actually has its own layout en engine that allows us to paint glyphs in the correct places. One of the things I didn't want to do is um, develop a whole layout en engine in Python. Uh, one of the things that I've been doing is looking at, um, uh, let's see if I can get this name right, it's David Berghoff. David Berghoff has been doing a, an Inkscape extension called Scientific uh, Inkscape, and it's basically got a lot of this functionality built in. Um, but I had to make a call on like whether I want to go down that route of re-implementing re all of the layout and engine, uh, which is not only complicated in and of itself, but you then have to make sure that it's the same layout and engine results that you would get from Inkscape itself. 
or I can ask Inkscape to basically tell me where all of the glyphs are going to be beforehand. Um, and that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to ask, I'm going to create an action inside of Inkscape that I haven't done yet because it's a bit much um, to basically tell me where, where every single letter is supposed to be positioned. And then what I think I'll still do is I think I'll still add in a basic layouter, which is basically just taking the word and character space spacing and feeding them directly into the PDF engine. And then if I don't have glyph positions, I'm just going to kind of do a dumb thing and then at least they'll they'll be output and for the majority of cases especially in english sorry asian lang languages uh this will mostly be correct um so that's positioning stuff which is complicated in and of itself i don't have everything fixed but i'm very very happy with the results that i've managed to get so far especially fixing the flipping i was flipping out about how hard that was going to be um and i'm very very happy that's fixed um the third element of text is styles. And this is particularly interesting because styling text, basically the fill color, stroke color, uh, whether it's patterned, whether it's a clipping region, all of these things, um, they look very much like the kinds of preferences you would have on a regularly drawn shape. But in PDF land, it's a separate part of the spec. And while the vast majority of it is the same, not all of it is the same. So you have to be careful. And Cappy PDF library um, hasn't implemented the vast, vast majority of options. Um, in fact, it didn't even have stroke color, uh, preferring to crash instead of giving me a stroke color. So I've, I've had to go back into Cappy PDF and start adding in some, some of that functionality. Um, this is probably just going to be a long process of adding each of those fun functions in. Most people, I think, when they're drawing text as text, just pro probably want to fill color. Um, but here's the thing about exporting is that you never can tell what a user's do document is going to contain. So you have to kind of support everything, um, which means that, you know, dashed lines and strokes and caps and all sorts of stuff need to need to be there pretty much from day one or you're going to get a lot of bug, bug reports. Um, OK, so, so that's text. It's definitely moving along. Um, it's definitely in the direction that I wanted it to happen. Um, and you can definitely see from me describing how this PDF stuff is, is going, just how complicated this process is and why a lot of pro programmers in the Inkscape project considered writing a new PDF exporter to be kind of a task that was too big to be able to do, especially as a volunteer. Uh, but I think we can do it. Okay. Let's talk about some of the things that have been going on in Inkscape that I haven't been into. Um, first of all, let's talk about Mark. Mark has been uh, dealing with our CI build builder. Uh, we had a bit of a hiccup with GitLab. We ran out of build units. That's basically, usually if you're a business, they would charge you for being able to run builds and various other things, but they give us uh, free resources to be able to run the Inkscape project. And we ran out of those minutes. And there's also some other infrastructure improvements that Mark wants to make. Uh, Jonathan has been doing more extensions refactoring, trying to speed things up, uh, trying to make the extensions run better. We've also had some contributions from some people who have managed to fix some of the extensions, which is great to see. Uh, Python extensions are a great entry into Inkscape development because you don't need to know C++. Uh, the testing uh, test infrastructure is very, very strong, so we're less worried about uh, merging your chain changes. Um, we have the Google Summer of Code uh, projects, which are, I think, the first evals are due September 4th. Uh, we'll see how, how that goes. Um, we are trying to set up a grants pro program. Um, Jonathan's mo most mostly involved in that, which is trying to make it so that if we have a feature like, say, for instance, the PDF work, but also other stuff, and we weren't funding it through, say, paid, 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 Patreon, like I'm doing here, but instead we wanted to fund it through Inkscape itself, uh, then there would be a routine or in a way to do this. Um, the only thing is that it would be restricted to things that were in the public interest. So there would be some restrictions on like what kind of features would be up for those grants. This is very, very early days, though. We don't know what kind of stru structure or what kind of restri restrictions we'll end up with. Um, Javier has been work working both to fix and improve the live path effects. Um, there's a bunch of I issues that have cropped up, some cr crashes, some other things that have gone on. Uh, and he's been st stepping up to fix those. And Tav has continued his work on the GTK4 stuff. 
Uh, I know PBS has also been working on the GTK4 stuff and um, Daniel Balls has also been there. So GTK4 continues on. Um, okay, so this video is a bit long. Sorry about that. I will see you all next week. Thank you for joining me this for this week's update. And uh, let me know in the comments how you think we're, we're getting on and what you think we should be doing. Thank you.